Hello YouTube and welcome to Ground Forks. This is episode 6 of the Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration. And first off, we have a new recruit, uh, recruit John Kerman, and he is a pilot. So, uh, I would like this, to take this opportunity to once again call upon all of you, my subscribers and viewers. If you want to be in a particular save, uh, please do state the name of the Kerbal that you want and also do state the occupation that you want. And I will try to do my best to oblige. I'll either try to make it the exact name and profession, whichever turns out, or I will make it uh, an exact profession and name might be T. Kerman or Kerman Senior, Junior, whatever. Anyway, uh, we have successfully made a retrograde quarks experiment uh, which we will be returning to Kerbin and uh, to be able to actually do eccentric quarks we would actually need another cyclotron so now I'm constructing a craft that would be taking a second cyclotron all the way up to Kerbin orbital lab 1 the two cyclotrons ho should ha hopefully provide both retrograde and prograde quarks and in such way create, uh, what do you call it, eccentric quarks, which should basically be a precursor to recovering eggs or to uncovering the secrets of the exotic matter. Um, okay, so... We are making some power panels, then we want to be putting SAS. This is, I'm first designing the module that I want to dock. And I have decided not to put this one in the uh, Kerbal Engineering series because the craft itself is quite simplistic. It's basically cyclotron with two RCS fuel tanks and balanced so it can be well and easily docked. And then we're going to just put the some stage that will basically take it to where it needs to go and strap on a couple of boosters, couple of struts, and then we should be done with it. So I'm trying to see if the 3.75 fairing would work, but I think I'll need the expanded one. Okay, just putting it in a fairing. Come on, and... Perfect. Closing the fairing. Yes. Once again, clamshell deploy, because I really hate confetti. Um, then I'm looking for a 5, or so, sorry, 3.75 meter fuel tank, and I will be looking for the Rhino engine, and it gives us 3.4 thousand meters per second of delta V, but I've forgotten that I actually don't want a single stage to orbit, but I rather want it to be also the smaller one because the big rocket is kind of hard to maneuver and turn in the orbit so I'm trying to look for smaller like twitch liquid fuel engines which I will be using for the rendezvous maneuvers and I want to stack enough of them I think 12 will do the trick with 705 meters per second should be plenty okay then I'm looking for the um, low profile engine which I also want to put there I want a little bit more oomph rather than just 0 0.12 because it's kind of gets hard to maneuver with only that one okay so we have an upper stage engine and uh, we want to be putting 3.75 adapter and uh, as I like I said it's a very very simplistic rocket in itself but that puts us at roughly 2800 which is insufficient to get into orbit so I'm thinking of putting some side boosters and I'm always going for this liquid fuel booster design and um, a couple of these and I was thinking hmm how could I make this more interesting usually my all of my rockets look alike so I'm thinking yeah this could work but once again it doesn't give me the exact delta V that I'm looking for so and it's 1.10 thrust to weight so let's make it a little bit more fun let me see if I can find some SRBs to put on the side we haven't used solid rocket boosters for quite a while oh those are the shuttle ones no um, 
where is the yeah Thor these are the ones I've been looking for those are big solid rocket boosters and they pack a pretty decent amount of Delta V so together with our um, main engine which is the Rhino they should be providing enough thrust hopefully to get into orbit and yeah okay correct the place now let's just put them a little bit more downwards I like how this looks and I want to make sure that I have th thrust limiter set to 1.44 which I think is good let's put some winglets on top I think four of them should do the trick and uh, then let me just quickly put some launch clamps and I think that should be it let's do the simulation actually I remember that I wanted to put a uh, antenna on top of it because otherwise our rocket would just flip so let's do the simulation okay throttle to max and boost 1.22 of the launch pad which I consider to be pretty good our solid rocket booster spewing smoke with real plume a mod that I uncovered well fairly recently just before this playthrough and I love it okay so our apoapsis is already in the 4000 range performing our gravity turn It seems that we have enough Delta V, but you never know. It is rising because of our SRBs and we are coming up on the solid rocket booster detachment. Perfect. Okay, our apoapsis is now in the 40s. So we want to be now thrusting a little bit more sideways. This is, by the way, a little bit steeper profile, I guess, but uh, no matter, looks pretty good to me so far. It's not the most fuel efficient, I'll give it that, but still. Okay, 84, 85, let's stop around 100-ish. And cut off, great. So let's see, um, want to do the circularization burn. Now let's see, uh, our total delta V for circularizing is 1239 and we have 780 in the main engine which means we will be circularizing on the upper stage which I guess it's fine enough no worries and burn got rid of the fairings performing the circularization burn it's gonna be close I'll tell you that much but I guess it's fine I mean we don't need that much Delta V anyway just enough so we can circularize and that leaves us a roughly 270 it's the same amount that we had actually on shuttle and Buran so I think that's enough okay guys by the way this is a simulation still so that I have to remind myself it's not the real thing so we're just testing out the system seeing if it's okay and uh, roughly the rendezvous burn would take some between 10 and 40 I believe meters per second which I think should be fine so 
looking overall I am pretty happy with that yeah so as you can see 40 meters per second not a whole lot 34 33 but um, yeah I just wanted to guesstimate to see since we are playing close to the margin that I will have enough and we also have to take into account that we will need some delta V to actually you know um, decelerate and come to the same speed as the station but I guess that should be pretty fine um, I might add a little bit more of a tank just to be on the safer side so we have a little wider margin I'm thinking around an additional 200 meters per second maybe but then again these speeds aren't that great so yeah okay let's revert back to the editor I'm overall I'm pretty happy I'm thinking I will add that one more tank just to add a little bit more oomph to it so where is the tank okay slap it here great that should put us in a still good thrust away it's 132 it looks fine and yeah so I'm gonna kick for building it and let's take the next order of business beautiful sunrise at the case the rover we want to take John Kerman uh, to actually be able to return the shuttle I'll take my uh, my newly recruited John Kerman and I wanted to plant a flag and I want him to plant a flag at the beginning of the KSC runway which should hopefully make it easier for us to aim so we don't overshoot like we did um, on our previous Buran mission so John buddy you have been recruited and immediately assigned to a mission it's not a big mission but you will be given more for sure Consider this as your Rover 101 training, because I do intend you to use you for maybe a later on Rover mission or something. So, get out, plant the flag, and let's call it KSC Runway Start. I find this to be a very convenient way how you can actually align your, you know, burns and your headings and so and so. Okay, let's recover him and now we want to be... and he got some ribbons. Well, kudos! Okay, so the next order of business will be the shuttle now. And the shuttle is currently docked to the Kerbin Orbital Station and we are making a couple of laps in the tracking station simply because I want I don't want to be landing in the dark. As simple as that. So, okay, the two dots indicate that both of these uh, two are command centers according to the remote tech. If you would like to learn more about what the com the, the, does it mean to be a command center, I urge you to check my remote tech uh, school series. It's an older watch but still uh, applies when it comes to the questions of the remote tech. Okay, coming back to the lab we have all the precursors and we can finish the quark experiments and let us analyze the results in the spectrometron so we were able to analyze retrograde quarks meaning that our next experiment will be consisting of two cyclotrons and basically eccentric quarks which will help us to uncover secrets of the dark matter or of the not the dark matter but the exotic matter so, I'm just adding a little bit fuel and balancing the left and right wing because now after we finish this we will be sending the results to Kerbin but we will also be dubbing down and returning our Kerbin shuttle orbiter back to the KSC. Final checks before we undock. 
turning RCS on, moving ever so slowly away from the station and we don't want to be bumping anything so a little bit on the cautious side perfect RCS to forward screenshot closing the cargo bay doors and I think I will be doing reducing our orbit on the RCS alone or not alone but on the RCS so I fully intend to burn the monoprop that we have because why not and our periapsis is in the 97 range so I'll use the RCS to burn it further down I have never guys performed a return with the Kerbin shuttle orbiter so I don't know if it's less or more stable than our Buran that we've been using but I already have some experience when it comes to returning with the Buran so I'm guessing this should be fairly simple. Okay, we do want a shallow approach though and we want to be stopping somewhere before that our projected trajectory goes slightly ahead of the KSC because when we will be re-entering I will keep at 30 degrees angle and uh, that will create some atmospheric lift so that should hopefully extend and help our uh, trajectory to shoot directly for the KSC so like I said, when I'm planning the burn, we should be landing slightly shorter than the KSC. So let's see if we can plan a maneuver node. I'm turning the trajectories on because I can use its help. I mean, for shuttles, it's a little bit harder to judge. Uh, a little bit more. I don't want the trajectory to be too steep on re-entry and I'm thinking somewhere along these lines. So let's create it so that I fall short like or that I hit it exactly on the head like yeah like this falling just slightly short of the KSC and I'm hoping that the wings and the lift will do the things that where they will extend this to a degree because that's what ha happened to us with the Buran and that's why I'm trying to now find an optimal descent path by the way guys if you have played with the Kerbin Shuttle Orbiter and you know how to correctly re-enter, please let me know in the comments below. I would really appreciate it a lot. This is a first re-entry for me with a KSO, so yeah. 50 meters per second, very tiny burn, and we have 220 meters per second, so we ha do have enough so we don't need to worry about our delta v we just have to make sure that we re-enter safely and land back on the ksc we have our pilot for today will be jab uh, bob is the scientist that will be bringing the experiment home and pablo will be the engineer that basically helped uh, well connect the two and providing support for the cyclotrons when, while they were working Okay, we have entered the atmosphere officially, so I just want to be uh, putting, since uh, the control surfaces, I really like the, the spinning mechanism in the, in the, um, uh, in the view. Okay, aligning. Oh, and I think I've just unpinned it. Sorry, I'm a little bit new to this type of screens. And as you know, I've been playing a long time in 090. So, but anyway, let's now say vertical control surface one, vertical control surface two, which are basically t the two twin tails of the Kerbin Shuttle Orbiter. And then we have the main big flap that I want to be putting. I'm just putting this in the configuration and deploy, extend it, perfect. Yeah, let's align them like this. I think this looks about right. Okay, 
<clears throat> re-entering now at 61 kilometers. Our descent rate is 100 meters per second or around 100. This is a little bit too steep, but uh, I'm hoping, oh, and let's transfer all the fuel and everything a little bit forward to the front and left wing because of the stability reasons. And yeah, as you can see, our projected basically impact point is slightly shorter of the KSE, which I think it's okay. And we have a beautiful um, light at the horizon, meaning it will soon be dawn, hopefully. Let me just move the GUI and appreciate the beauty and the majesty of this site. Oh, we have slightly heating of the pilot cabin. Oh, and we have a sunrise. Wow. Well, I think I found my screenshot for this episode. That's for sure. Um, okay. Beautiful, beautiful sunrise. Okay, we are at 54 and our periapsis height is dropping because we are already experiencing some friction in the upper atmosphere. We are trying, we have deployed whatever we could deploy to actually slow down as much as possible. Flaps are deployed and um, air brakes are deployed and we are maintaining the... Um, like profile of 30 degrees and our vertical velocity is minus 10 minus 9 so even less than that which puts us as a sh at a shallow path which i actually consider to be great everything looking good so far I really like the design of this um, KSO orbiter. It's really, you know, you can really appreciate the shuttle looks of it, etc. So, um, yeah, 52 kilometers up. Pitching slightly up because I want my descent uh, rate to be around 10 between 10 and 100 that's for sure I don't want it to be more than 100 but I do want also to exert a little bit of braking because the more we can actually decelerate in the higher uh, layers of the atmosphere the safer will be for our three carbonauts to basically land at the KSC the less heating we will be experiencing when re-entering so the goal would be to bleed off enough energy by the time we hit the mountains. We should already be around Mach maybe one or two at the most. And then um, then hopefully we could just dive down and uh, using the flaps and other control surfaces decelerate to the point where we can actually land at the KSC. That's the plan anyway. Our vertical speed is a little bit higher it's increasing which does worry me a little bit i might be at a little bit too steep of an angle but then again i do want to maintain it because i do want to like i said decelerate as quickly as possible i think we're passing over the deserts and as you can see, since we set the target to our runway, the two alignment indicators are now coming together. So that's the idea. The idea is to slowly but surely align the two indicators and that will basically guide us home. The yellow prograde with the purple uh, or the pink, sorry, uh, the pink uh, target prograde. 
and now we are going into the slightly thicker layers of the atmosphere and this is where I actually hope that I will be able to break the most. Um, my vertical descent rate does concern me a little bit. I'm hoping the flaps will be here for more stability. Oh. Okay. Pitching up, pitching up. But when I pitch up, I get side slip left and right, which does concern me a little bit. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No side slipping, please. Okay, 1600, I'm worried that I will once again overshoot the KSC, guys. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh, now we are becoming less and less stable. This is a little bit troublesome. Oh, and... Ooh. Holy crap. What the hell just happened? Vessel destroyed. What? I believe, guys, what happened is that due to the atmospheric forces, basically the pressure tore it. Okay, so cockpit exploded due to overheating? What the hell? Well, it never showed that it was overheating. Oh well, I guess it's my piloting, so I'll have to take the fall for it. It's a sad day, ladies and gentlemen. That means we have Bob here, Jeb, and Pablo who died. So let's award them the Intersidera ribbon. Bob, your sacrifice will be remembered. Jeb, well, sorry guys that... <clears throat> they don't have more ribbons, but it's because of me transferring to the new save. So, well, Jeb will be getting also the diamond ribbon because of his distinguished service uh, for the Kerbal race. And, yeah, he flew further than anybody and he reached for the stars and, well, got burned on the re-entry. Sorry guys, this is a very sad day. Um, I'll end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. We'll continue in the next one. Thanks and bye.